Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, March 12th, 2020. Steve Cypress here. A little self-indulgent today because this marks the end of the third straight year that I have come to you with a new live video that I record on Facebook and then disseminate all over the place on the internet to my blog and my podcast, LinkedIn, Twitter, various Facebook pages, uh, wherever else I put it all over the place. Uh, every single day for the past three years, tomorrow, March 13th, will be the start of the fourth straight year of me doing that. And before I recorded this, I went to look back. I hesitated and I cringed and I went to look back at my very first Facebook Live video that I recorded on March 13th, 2017, and I expected to be embarrassed, cringing, and miserable over how horrible it was. And, you know, it wasn't that horrible. Uh, and in honor, of course, of the anniversary, hey, what is up? My friend Uzal is here. And thanks for the likes. And uh, in honor of that uh, video, I changed my shirt to wear the exact same shirt that I wore. A little worse for wear and tear, I'm sure. But same shirt that I wore in that very first video on March 13th, 2017. Of course, I did it in my office on my laptop with uh, one of my uh, rhinos on the wall behind me. The rhino that is actually still on the wall behind me, even though I've moved to a new office. Who knew? But anyway, uh, wasn't that bad. And that was going to be my lesson today. That understand that anything new, you got to suck at it before you can get good at it. So don't worry about it. Just go and do it. Now, I know that my second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth, and about tenth and twentieth ones... Had to be horrible, because I remember stumbling and bumbling and not know what I was doing, and I remember searching for even what to talk about before my um, very good friend Rob Onspock uh, uh, coached me. All top performers have coaches, so hopefully you're not being a lone ranger, because that's clearly the kiss of death for anybody uh, in any endeavor in life. And uh, he coached me, and he said, theme it out, theme it out. And that's why every day has a different theme. Yesterday was World Wide Web Wednesday, where I talk about marketing on the internet. Today is Throwback Thursday. We talk about something from the past. Tomorrow will be Foundation Friday, basic business building tips and so on. And so now I'm never at a loss for a topic of what to talk about. But I know in the beginning I was stumbling, fumbling, and bumbling. And now, of course, <laughs> I'm still definitely not a pro now. I mean, uh, this... I'm sure the lighting is not great, the sound isn't great, and I'm holding an iPhone in my hand. I don't have a professional camera. I don't do any of these whiz-bang transitions like you see on these high-quality, uh, overproduced YouTube videos that bring in bazillions of views and millions of dollars and all that. I just come to you raw, real, and tell it like it is. And I'm going to say the thing to your favorite performer, your favorite, favorite entertainer of any kind. It can be sports, can be... A singer, can be an actor, all of them sucked in their very first performances. So I'll give you a few examples. Uh, let's take uh, an athlete. Let's take Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team. So if you saw a video of Michael Jordan in his first practice in high school, I'm sure he sucked. But now, of course, if you see a video of Michael Jordan playing basketball from, from his NBA career, he's the greatest player ever. Okay, how about uh, uh, an entertainer, an actor? Okay, all the time, I don't watch them anymore because now they're just all anti-Trump, uh, ridiculous, non-funny shows. But back in the days of Johnny Carson or Letterman or whoever, and every time a movie blockbuster comes out, the actors go on tour and they do all the shows and they come on and they you know, do their interviews and tell their stories. And once in a while, the host will reach back into the vault and surprise them and say, let's uh, see a clip from your latest blockbuster, Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks or Arnold Schwarzenegger or, you know, the biggest stars. And they go, okay, yeah, let's see the clip. And instead, they'd, they'd make a joke. They'd, they'd spring on them a clip of some really bad early performance there. By definition, really bad, because it was an early performance. Maybe their first ever commercial or their first ever appearance when they were a kid on a kid's show or, uh, you know, eating Wonder Bread or eating, you know, peanut butter when they were seven or something. And they cringe and they're like, oh, don't show that. No, I was terrible. Oh, look at my hair. Oh, I was terrible. Look at my face. Look at everything. It's terrible. And of course it's terrible. But they got out there and they did it. 
Uh, last one, let's take uh, music. Who's your favorite band? I mean, I like the Beatles. When I was a kid, you know, I got every Beatles album there was, and, and then I would get the bootlegs. When I ran out of, I already got all the albums. There was only like 18 or 20 of them. Uh, then I got bootlegs. Well, the bootlegs, they were horrible. I mean, if you listen to the Beatles, if you got to see John, Paul, and George, and Pete Best, and whoever else uh, was their drummer back in the day when they were like uh, 16 years old and and just starting to play, I'm sure they were terrible. They were playing all cover songs. They probably were not playing the instruments well. They probably weren't singing great. They didn't have, they, the, plop, the songs they wrote probably were terrible compared to, you know, Hey Jude and, and later the big thing. And, you know, so if you played that for them, they'd be like, oh, no, that's why it's a bootleg. That's why we never, uh, you know, produced those recordings. We never released those. They were terrible. And they'd even tell you that their, their first few albums were terrible compared to later on when they did Magical Mystery Tour and, and, and Abbey Road and Sgt. Pepper and all the great stuff. They never say, oh, our greatest album was our first couple of albums, uh, you know, or, or Help. Uh, it was Rubber Soul that they did like a year after Help, not those early bubblegum ones. So it's going to be the same. Any band, any speaker, any athlete, any entertainer, and anybody doing a video, speaking on the stage, writing an email, putting up a website... Uh, attempting to do your first promotion, write your first great subject line on an email so it gets opened instead of ignored and, and, and deleted immediately. Uh, send out your first direct mail piece so you can make some real money instead of just marketing with emails and social media and that crap. You can make about 40 times the money when you get doing direct mail right. It's the most cost-effective, most profit-producing way to market of all time still by far, and even better than it ever was, because now pe more people are heading to the internet. It's the same reason that right now, we're, in, we're officially entered a down economy, and in a down economy, people that are aggressive marketing and advertising and selling, there is a crap load of money to be made. Just like in direct mail, because most people just don't do it. So a lot of business owners, most business owners right now are gonna be panicking, they're going to be in fear. They're going to say, oh, people aren't spending money. They aren't going out. They aren't doing whatever. I'm going to ramp down my advertising and sales. And then they just somehow think, I had this discussion today with a client of mine who does marketing for restaurants and bars. And the dumb, failing, going to fail, 90% of businesses fail, so that's most of them. But the going to fail business owners, uh, restaurant bar owners that think, oh, you know, people aren't going to go out during this, uh, you know, what do they call it? The epidemic, pandemic, virus, something? What nonsense. I mean, if you told me, uh, you know, man, it's a flu season. The flu's going around. Everyone's getting it. Um, I'm pretty sure they didn't cancel any NBA games because of it. We had tickets tomorrow. We bought 16 tickets to the Brewers game tomorrow for a neighbor of mine who loves baseball. It's his favorite team. And all kinds of people are going to go and have a blast. And, oh, today, oh, we're canceling spring training. Like, because of, because of a virus? Like, you, you couldn't get me to not go somewhere because it's people have the flu or people have a cold, so you're going to get sick. You know, one of the best things going to happen to this coronavirus thing is this NBA player, Tom Hanks, you know, famous people are, they tested positive for this thing, and then they're going to recover in like a week and they'll be fine, and then maybe everybody will stop the nonsense and the BS and stop all the panic that's can't Notice, by the way, that even the people canceling all the events know it's all BS. And it's all attitude, and it's all in the mind. It's just a panic. Because they're, they're saying, oh, we'll delay the baseball season for two weeks. Well, I'm pretty sure everyone knows there will not be a, uh, a what do you call it, the, uh, the vaccine. There will not be a vaccine to cure this thing two weeks into the baseball season. Or they say, oh, you know, we're, we're going to cancel that conference from March till May or June or you know, we'll do it in August. There's not going to be a vaccine by then. So physically, there's going to be no difference. The virus is still going to be around. And people that are already dying in a nursing home, having all kinds of respiratory troubles, are going to die from getting a flu, from getting a cold, from getting pneumonia, from getting this virus, from getting anything. But athletes, this guy, so this, you read it all the time. Oh, the player's out in baseball. He's out for a few days with flu-like symptoms. Oh, he has the flu. He'll be out for a week or whatever. Like, 
But people are going to die from this thing. Yeah, a few people die. More people will die, of course, every day in car accidents and slipping down stairs and slipping in the bathtub than they ever will from this ridiculous virus. But anyway, I digress. So everybody starting out does something poorly. Business owners that don't know what they're doing are going to cut their advertising and marketing during this down economy. Those of us that ramp up the marketing and advertising are going to steal all that market share. So the restaurant owners, talking to my client today, the ones that are smart and use his service and market their restaurant like crazy, are going to take all the regular customers away from the restaurant owners who don't market and sell and put out specials and, and don't remind people to come in because they clearly are going to hunker down in the corner and be feared and panicked and whatever. And they just think when the economy turns around, because of course it'll turn around and it will turn around with an absolute boom, unlike the Bush debacle that turned around into a stagnant piece of crap for eight years under Obama. This thing will, it's down now, but it'll turn around with an amazing boom like recessions are supposed to turn around into a boom, not into eight years of stagnation. So it's going to boom. And then these non-aggressive, passive, losing business owners that ramp down their advertising and marketing during that downtime for a few months are going to think, okay, now all my customers will just come back. Well, no, they won't. Not if you have someone smart in your area or in your marketplace or in your industry or whatever, like me or a client of mine that's going to market aggressively during the downtime, we're going to take all your customers. They're not going back to you when the market turns again. They'll already have fallen in love with a new place for somebody who's an aggressive marketer. So now's the time. Put the pedal to the metal. Do something you're not great at. If it's go do a video or if it's go do a podcast Now's the time, start a newsletter, uh, go host an event, speak on the stage for the first time, write your first book, do something new, understand that later on you might look back and go, man, that really sucked, but how quickly do you want to get good? Because you're not going to get good about by not doing it for another few months or years, but if you do it for a little bit and you're terrible, then you get good at it. So let's get the terrible stuff out of the way, folks. Now, I don't think that my videos were absolutely terrible until now. It didn't take me three years to get good at it. In fact, I know that I get a lot of clients from and I help a lot of people and I do a lot of free strategy sessions. You want one, go to helpfromsteve.com where I help out a lot of people. All the time when I attend events or speak or host events, people come up to me, oh, I watch your videos. I'm like, well, you might say hello once in a while or put a comment or put a like. But, you know, when I look at the tracking, these videos, uh, you add them up from all over the place, they get thousands of views. Well, that didn't happen when I first started. And it won't happen to you when you first start. It's likely. So do you want to delay that forever? Or do you want to get started? So be like I was three years ago tomorrow, March 13th, 2017. I turned this camera on, different camera on my laptop, but I, I turned on a Facebook Live video for the very first time. And now... I'm here to say I'm celebrating three straight years of recording a new Facebook Live video every single day. Have I wanted to do it every single day? Has it been convenient every single day? Has my beautiful wife, Michelle, loved the fact that every single day I was like, oh, forgot to do my video, and there I am at 9, 10 o'clock at night. Sometimes the technology wasn't working, and the Internet's down, and I can't get a signal, and it wasn't until 11 o'clock at night or so. But I did it every single day. Every single day. How about that? Once in a while, I get a client who just says, you know, I know I want to work with you because clearly you're a man of your word and whatever you say you do because you say you're going to do a video every day and you do it. So I know that whatever you tell me you're going to do, you're going to do. My business is going to make a lot of money and it's going to work. So consistency every single day and eventually you might even get good at it. Who knows? Someday I might actually get good at this stuff. We'll see. Anyway. Uh, thanks for the likes. Lisa's here as well. Maybe you're already gone, but thanks for everyone that was here live. Thanks for everyone watched on the le replay. Not a great sunset today, even though I got out here a little late for it anyway, because I thought I'd just kind of check out the video from last year. I ended up watching the whole thing. And uh, kind of the end of the sunset here, but it was a cloudy and rainy day all day, also yesterday, and also tomorrow. It was probably going to rain out this spring training game we were going to all go to tomorrow anyway. Uh, my doubleheader uh, softball game got rained out this morning. It's just raining like crazy here. Um, however, I'm still in short sleeves and hanging out, still in the 60s, nice, warm, comfortable rain. So wish you were here. 
Hope you're having some spectacular weather and a spectacular day wherever you're watching this. Thanks for being here live. Thanks for watching on the replay. Thanks for being with me at any time or all the time that we've been together through the last three years and hopefully many more to come. I'll catch you tomorrow on Foundation Friday. We're going to do another part in our multi-part series on the great book by J. Paul Getty, written when he was the richest man on earth called How to Be Rich. I will share some fantastic business building, basic foundational lessons from that great book tomorrow, and I will catch you then. Over and out, three years down, more to come. Bye-bye.